Hello YouTube students, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at evaluating the trigonometric functions at 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. And to do so, I want to use a method which eliminates the need for a calculator. This method here was a great tool for me when I was in college and it's just a really effective way of deriving the particular values by using a equilateral triangle and a isosceles right triangle. So let's start with the equilateral triangle. And we could go ahead and set each side equal to 1. This is just going to simplify the work, but this will also work no matter which side length we choose. So now that we have this equilateral triangle, what we need to do is construct a perpendicular bisector. And now this is where the properties of an equilateral triangle is going to come in. Since I'm focusing more on how this is a tool for figuring out the values, we won't go ahead and prove why when we drop down this perpendicular line that it bisects this angle into 30 degrees and 30 degrees. A quick explanation would be hypotenuse leg. Both of these triangles have the same hypotenuse of 1 and they share this same leg. So the, these two triangles are congruent so these two angles have to be the same. So it would have to be 30 plus 30. And a similar argument this would be 90 plus 90. So using uh, that information, now since this side length is 1 and these two triangles are the same, these two side lengths are the same, so they're equal to 1 half and 1 half. But for the sake of deriving the values, you would just go ahead and drop down the perpendicular bisector. This would be 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 1 half, 1 half. And now what this allows us to do is we could use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And we can pick either of these triangles, but the goal is going to be to find this missing side, which I'll call b for now. So we could substitute for a. We have, instead of a, we could look at 1 half, since this leg is of length 1 half, and the hypotenuse is equal to 1, so we could call c. We'll replace c with 1. So now we have 1 half squared is 1 fourth, plus b squared equals 1 squared, which is 1. So now we need to solve for b squared. We subtract 1 fourth from both sides. And now we're left with b squared. And now 1 minus a fourth is equal to 3 fourths. Quick way to check would just be to go ahead and make this 4 over 4. And 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4 is 3 over 4. So now to solve for b, what we need to do is take the square root of both sides. So we have b is equal to, we have the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 4, but the square root of 4 is 2. So we could go ahead now and replace b with the square root of 3 over 2. So now when we come over to this section here, this is where we're going to need the definition of the trigonometric functions. Now when we're evaluating, let's say, sine of 30 degrees, the definition of sine is that the sine function looks at the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse on a right triangle. So we look at this 30 degree angle and opposite of this 30 degree angle is 1 half divided by the hypotenuse which is 1. So this is just equal to 1 half. So we have sine of 30 is equal to 1 half. Now we could do the same thing for sine of 60 degrees. So for sine of 60 degrees, we look at this 60 degree angle, and we could use either triangle. It would work in either case, whichever one we use. But opposite of this 60 degree angle is this side of length square root of 3 divided by 2. So we have opposite over the hypotenuse. So square root of 3 over 2 divided by the hypotenuse 1. So sine of 60 is just simply equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Oh yeah, the square root of 3 over 2 will write in our answer section. So now I'm going to skip sine of 45 because we're going to need this isosceles right triangle. So I want to look at cosine and tangent now for 30 and 60 degrees. And we could use the same strategy. We're looking at cosine of 30 cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine, by definition, is the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. 
So we have adjacent to 30 degrees is the side of length square root of 3 over 2 divided by the hypotenuse 1. Notice how if we go adjacent to 30, we're highlighting the side we found using the Pythagorean theorem. So cosine of 30 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. And now we could do the same thing for cosine 60. We're looking at this 60 degree angle, and adjacent to this 60 degree angle is the side of length 1 half. So we have 1 half divided by the hypotenuse, which is 1. So cosine of 60 is equal to 1 half. And now we can take a look at tangent. I'll go ahead and erase this information. So we're looking at tangent of 30 degrees now. But by definition, the tangent function will compare the well the tangent function will give you a ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. So we target this 30 degree angle and the side opposite of this 30 degree angle is this side of length one half. So we have one half divided by and the the side adjacent to this 30 degree angle is the square root of three over two. So now to simplify this, we could use that keep change flip method. So we keep the numerator, we change this to multiplication, and we flip the denominator. And now these twos will cancel. So we have that tangent of 30 degrees is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 3. Which some teachers will put it in a different form. If we look at 1 over the square root of 3, and we multiply both the numerator by the square root of 3 and the denominator by radical 3, this would give us square root of 3 times 1 is the square root of 3, and then radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. So this is another way we could write 1 divided by the square root of 3. And now, let's take a look at tangent of 60. Tangent of 60, we're looking at the side opposite of this 60 degree angle. So we have the square root of 3 divided by 2, divided by the side adjacent to 60 degrees, which is 1 half. So the opposite side to the adjacent side. And now this is going to simplify. We have the square root of 3 over 2 times, and we can flip the fraction in the denominator, 2 over 1. So these 2's are going to cancel, and tangent at 60 degrees is equal to the square root of 3. And this is going to conclude the examples using the equilateral triangle. So let's recall, the strategy is to drop down a perpendicular bisector, creating a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and now you have side lengths 1 and 1 half, and use the Pythagorean theorem to find this square root of 3 over 2. But the more you practice this, the faster you'll recognize that that's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. So now let's look at this triangle here. We have an isosceles right triangle which by definition this tells us that both of these angles are 45 degrees and we could go ahead and label these sides one each. So now we can once again use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what the length of the hypotenuse is. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we're looking for the hypotenuse, so we'll call this c. We have, let's replace a, we have 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to c squared. We're given the two legs, so we're going to substitute a and b for these two legs of length 1. So now we have 1 plus 1 equals c squared, which gives us 2 equals c squared, and then we take the square root of both sides, and we have c is equal to the square root of 2. So now we can replace c with the square root of 2. So now we could use the same strategy, we're just using the trigonometric functions now. So all we need to do, we're looking at cosine of 45 degrees. Cosine will give us the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So adjacent to this 45 degree angle would be the side of length 1 divided by the hypotenuse, the square root of 2. If we do sine of 45, and notice how it doesn't matter which 45 degree angle we use. If we use this angle, adjacent to this 45 degree angle would also be the side of length 1, and we would still have 1 over the square root of 2. 
So for sine of 45, you can pick either of the 45 degree angles, and opposite of this 45 degree angle is the side of length 1 divided by the hypotenuse, so we have 1 divided by the square root of 2. The sine of 45 equals the cosine of 45. This is a uh, special trigonometric property which we'll explore later. So now I'm just going to go ahead and fill these values in. We have 1 divided by the square root of 2, and we have 1 divided by the square root of 2 for sine 45. And now the last one would be tangent of 45. Oh, and also, before we do tangent, if we multiply this by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, this would give us square root of 2 times 1 is the square root of 2, and then radical, two, two, radical 2 times radical 2 is positive 2. So another way we could write 1 over the square root of 2 would be radical 2 over 2. This is, another, this is a, a popular way that it will appear. So now we have tangent of 45 degrees. Well, opposite to this 45 degree angle is 1, and adjacent to this 45 degree angle is 1. So using the definition of tangent as the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side, we have that tangent of 45 degrees equals 1. So once again, just to recap, using the isosceles right triangle, we could derive the trigonometric values at 45 degrees for sine, cosine, and tangent. And using the equilateral triangle, we could find the trigonometric values for sine, cosine, and tangent at 30 and 60 degrees. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video. Thank you all for watching and I hope that it was helpful.